Great. Okay, so we will begin. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone to Hermeneutics, TH-502 and TH-100. Uh, let's, let's first, everyone, if you can, everyone just mute their mic so there's no feedback because we will be posting this video on YouTube for those who cannot watch live. And we'll, we'll discuss all of these things as we work through the class tonight. But let's, if everyone can just mute their mic and I'll begin with the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity tonight. We give you the glory and the praise. This has been a, a long journey for so many of us. Father God, if, if any one of us were to take credit, we would be uh, in the wrong. Father, this is your work. This is your uh, calling. This is your supernatural, uh, providential uh, meeting. Father God, I just pray that you would be with us, that your spirit would be here tonight as we really focus upon a foundational component for our ministry, uh, interpreting your word. Uh, we as past leaders are called to two things, to, to be ministers of the word and to have a ministry of prayer, Father God. And so tonight as we, as we seek to, to develop and to understand a, a method for interpreting your word, as we begin this journey of of uh, hermeneutics, that you would just be with every single student here tonight, every single pastor, church leader, member. May you strengthen us. May we stand strong in the power of your strength. May we put on the whole armor of God that we will be able to withstand the schemes of the devil. Father, we know that 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 he is at work and he does not want this to be, be happening. I pray now that you would be here. Guide and lead us now. May we have a strong internet connection. May the electricity remains strong and we just want to give you the glory and the honor and the praise it's in our lord and savior's name jesus christ we pray all these things by faith alone amen amen okay. amen. amen so this has been a long journey for so many of us I, i'm thinking for myself i can't believe this is happening and so i just on behalf of myself and of, on the partners that we're working together from the U.S. to Cebu to, to Region 8, we just want to welcome you and just thank you for your, your time, for, for giving us this opportunity. And we hope that this can be a mutual benefit. We, we want to equip you. We want this to be equipping for you, but also um, uh, we want to hear from you. I learn, every time I teach, I learn something new. And so I, this is really a mutual uh, a time of, of learning. And so the, 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 the class that we're starting tonight is hermeneutics. And there's uh, two different uh, courses running at the same time. And so really it's the same topic, but the difference is in the level of requirements. So, so we're just gonna go ahead and work through this PowerPoint. Now, everyone's muted, but if you have a question, I can't see everyone, but do not hesitate to just interrupt me. I can answer your question. Maybe let me finish my thought and then another thought, just interrupt me. I want everyone to really be um, uh, to, to have clarity. So if I'm losing someone and you just want to ask a question, you can. Uh, if, if you don't have a good connection, you can just type in the chat or in the Facebook group your question and we can answer it throughout the week. So if you're uncomfortable asking a question, please. Uh, the, the Facebook group is designed for discussion, for announcements. So uh, ask your question there. Ask it on the group chat here when we take a break. I can see the group chat and we can answer your questions. So I want to emphasize, there's no pressure, but the only stupid question is the one that is not asked. Okay, so even if you feel like, oh my goodness, this is not a smart question, please ask it. Uh, I, want, I want everyone to, to, to come along in this journey. We're, we're on it together. So I don't want anyone to be left behind. Okay, so just quickly as we move along here, uh, by way of introduction, there's really three levels of, of, of or programs that we're offering with, with EVST. Uh, those programs are a certificate of ministry, and this is accredited through PCEC and BTC CGST. So uh, that, that program is actually being offered on Wednesday night, and uh, there will be an opportunity if you want to also join in those courses for credit for a different certificate that you're taking, it's possible. Um, we'll discuss that later. Uh, the second program is a certificate of theology, and this is really what I think most of you have, have signed on for. 
Um, the specific accredit accreditation is still ongoing. Uh, we're working with several different uh, uh, groups. So there will be some form of accreditation. We just don't have the specifics yet. And then the third category of programs is the Master of Arts in Theology with an emphasis in pastoral studies. And this is via Baptist Theological College, Cebu Graduate School of Theology. Now, the one thing I want to emphasize here is that there is a risk, there is a caveat that I want everyone to be aware of. Because of this COVID crisis, it has really opened up the doors to online uh, education. And, and from a long-term perspective, what we're doing tonight, what we're doing with Facebook groups, what we're doing with the, the cloud resource tool, which you will say later, uh, with YouTube delay videos, that is really the standard of, for online education in the US, okay? And so, so, so the long-term perspective is this online education. The difficulty though is that Ched, because of this transition in, in the Philippines, Ched could change, they could go back, they might slow down. This semester, if you, if you enroll in the Master of Arts, your, your course will be, it will be accredited, okay? So, so, so those, who, those who really choose the MA or have already chosen the MA, it will be accredited. The caveat is though, there is a possibility that Ched next semester could say, no, we're gonna go back to the old way. You know, that's not likely, it doesn't seem to be the case, but again, that's, that's a possibility. So if that were the case, the difficulty would be we could no longer offer the accreditation. We would still give you the same level. You would still have the same level of, of the Master of Arts, uh, that same level of, of, of teacher-student relationship, the, the standard, but the accreditation would, would, would be different because you would have to either go to Cebu to, to get to back into a class type situation, or you would have to um, wait until the online really became a, approved by Ched. So the reason why I'm saying that is there is, there is a possibility that we could not offer next semester, okay? So most, most of you signed up for the Certificate of Theology and there's no problem there. Whatever uh, accreditation we get, it will just be icing on the cake, okay? But for those who have enrolled in the MA, there is a risk that if you're really looking for that CHED accreditation, there is a risk for you, okay? And so you need to consider that. You, you are going to have to pay the enrollment fees, the accreditation through, through um, BTC CGST. There is that risk, okay? Um, and so perhaps you don't want to risk it. You can just change the certificate of theology later if everything really just is confirmed. We can work to have this class uh, um, we can work, we can work through some things there, okay? But that's really your decision. So I want everyone to pray about that. And by Friday, if you want to change to the certificate, if you're enrolled in the MA and you just want to drop down to the certificate, that's totally fine. Um, there is a big reward if you continue in the Master of Arts. So um, perhaps you're like, no, by faith, by faith, I will continue. That's completely fine. Um, and then the other thing too is that some of you, if, if, if you're, once we go through the syllabus, maybe you're afraid, maybe you say like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of English reading, it's Mahira for me. There's no problem with you enrolling for the certificate for this semester. This is like an adjustment. This is like before you play the basketball game, you have to go out and run one mile, you have to do some jumping jacks. And then next semester you enroll in the MA. Or maybe at the end of the semester you say, it's too hard, I will stay, okay? so. Again, there's no pressure if you want to take a step back, do the Certificate of Theology, and then enroll in January, okay? Um, so really, I just want everyone to pray, to, to, to think about the risk, to really assess where you're at after this class, and then you can make a decision. No pressure, there'll be no judgment. Um, you know, I'm always one when I start running, I go very slow. Even my daughter, we run now in, in, in our neighborhood, we run, and she goes off so fast, I'm like, I'm like, uh, car, car, you need to slow down. You're going to become tired so fast. And then lo and behold, one minute later, I'm carrying her. Or she's walking with me. So don't be afraid if you want to go slow, okay? So that's all I'll say. Um, and, and if you want to discuss privately, you can reach out to Kuya Henry. Pastor Henry, you can reach out to me. We can discuss more about your specific situation. Again, we want you to be very comfortable the primary purpose of this Mama Kapitid is really our learning, okay? So 
if you're focused on the learning, the content, it's going to be, it will be worth your time. It will be worth your investment. Okay. Let's just move on here to the next slide. Uh, so again, this is session number one, introduction to the course, hermeneutics TH-502 and TH-100. And just an overview of what we will be doing tonight. So we'll just be looking at a quick overview. Number one, we're going to have a time for introdu introducing all of you. So what we'll do is we'll stop screen sharing and then we'll have open up and then just, we'll just, I'll just call each one of you. I just want to hear your name, uh, where you're located and, and your current ministry uh, position. And um, uh, next we will be doing uh, a review of the syllabus. So we'll work through the syllabus so everyone really understands the requirements, what's, what's being required. In, in, in your related certificate or, or master program that you're working. Uh, next, we will discuss the cloud resource tool. So this tool is very powerful. This is your gateway. This is the gateway to research, to study. And it's more than just this class. This tool will be a, a resource that I hope you and your leaders will use for the rest of your life. My plan is to really continue to just grow it. Uh, the sky is the limit. And so uh, the cloud research resource tool, we will, we will discuss that, okay? Um, and then we will also discuss the interpreting the word concise method. So um, uh, there, there's a specific method. There's many different methods for interpretation for preparing sermons. So this is not, uh, this is something somewhat original to me, but, but it's, it's just a method for you to be thinking through the process so that you will be able to develop a good uh, sermon, maybe a, a teaching lesson, or for a devotional or a small group. Okay, so we'll, what, what I want to do is I want to look at the, the I'm going to give you the big picture of the method. And then as the semester goes, we are going to be really unpacking and looking at different things, different genres throughout, throughout scripture. But I want you to see the bird's eye view. I want you to see the big picture tonight so that you really have that that understanding and i and i also shared just a single page uh method that if you can print out we'll go through that tonight and then next week uh we will really begin working through uh, all the different things related to interpretation so um, i hope that makes sense and then uh lastly we, we will do is we will discuss <laughs> maybe the not so fun part but the homework so uh we are expecting everyone here to commit and to do the homework. Uh, this will, you, the benefit that you will experience is, is exponentially related to homework. The more time you invest in the homework, the more benefit the class will have. If you don't invest in the homework, uh, you won't have as much benefit because it's, it, it's in the practice, it's in that working through the homework that you really develop more questions, you see different issues, you see different successes. If you, if you don't pr do the homework, sayam talagam, it's like the welder. There's theory for welding, and then there's really talagam, there's a practice. We had a welder at my house who was doing work. He worked for a while, and, and he was really a new welder. I gave him, I trusted in him because he was a hard worker, I trusted him. His work from the beginning to the end was, wow, it was so different. You could see him just grow in his welding ability. And, and I really want that to be a practical illustration for this class. Your ability to interpret the word of God will exponentially grow as you practice. So this is something where I would say that it can't be something you're doing on Tuesday afternoon. I think you should be doing some, a little bit every day. Um, and uh, you can be directly, even maybe after tonight, you can start applying this in your preaching and your teaching. So this is one of those classes where really you will be able to benefit every week. So I just really want us to be thinking about that. Okay, so at this time, let's go, and ha let's go ahead and have introduction of students. So I'm going to stop sharing and uh, I can see everyone. So we'll just work, I'll just work across the screen so that everyone uh, can introduce yourself yourself. So I'm going to start with Alex. I'm sorry, Alex, you're the first one. If you could just introduce your name, where you live, uh, the name of your church, and also what, what you do for ministry. That would be great. Okay. I'm now currently residing in Palo Leite. 
By God's grace, sometimes I teach in Sunday, sometimes in young professionals in Havana, and even sometimes in lead. So, this sort of ministries. I think you mentioned preaching, Diba. It was, there was a cutout for a minute. Pre yeah, so Alex is preaching. Good, good. So, let's go now to the, the other Alex. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. <laughs> go ahead. Once again, good morning to everyone. Of course, I'm Alex. Alex Daako. We are uh, both uh, residing in Palo Leyte. And we are both <laughs> of the uh, Tacloban Bible community. The same residence <laughs> and the same name. Uh, now I'm, uh, we are starting to meet a small group in Pawing, the uh, Neighboring uh, Barangay Kapitek. And uh, likewise, I am assisting uh, Pastor Matt in uh, San Jose in uh, the Sunday service. So, uh, for my status, God bless everyone. Great, excellent. That was a great uh, testimony. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. So, you're, you're doing all group and also working Pastor Matt. Great. Okay, so Christopher, Christopher Rolando, if you can unmute your mic and then share the same. Yeah, good evening, everyone. I'm Christopher Rolando Rota, a resident pastor of Ormoc City Baptist Church. Um, I, had, I already graduated my Bachelor of Arts in Theology at Baptist Theological College in about 2012. So I, uh, we have uh, ministries in our outreaches. We have scholarship programs in high school because my wife is a, is a teacher. So then she also graduated from Baptist Theological College also. So we met there at BTC. Yeah. And I'm now a resident pastor here in Ormoc City Baptist Church. Great. Excellent. So... Thank you, Christopher. Welcome. So, Pastora Emmy, is, did I get that right, Pastora Emmy? Okay, my name is Emmy Kalich from Tacloban City. I am pastoring Eternal Life Ministry here in the city of Tacloban. And I am also supervising uh, 34 daughter churches under the ministry. <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> By God's grace, Diva. By God's grace. Amen. Attorney Bullboy Borja, it's your turn. You're up to bat. Okay. okay. My name is Bullboy Borja. I am now residing in uh, Santa Anblis, Tacloban City. I am attending at uh, Tacloban Bible Community. And uh, is also a member of the Board of Trustees, uh, currently of the Board of the TBC. And uh, I am assisting uh, Danny Pintabella with the group, The Transformers. Yeah. And I am one of your students <laughs> on Tuesdays. <laughs> Great. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Kuya Boy Boy. Okay. Pastor Noli, it's your turn. Just unmute your mic. Uh, I am Noli G. Suarez, the resident pastor of Kalbayog Baptist Church here in Kalbayog City, Samar. Uh, we have an outreach in Malaga, uh, baptizing seven believers. We are all now 15 there, and we have. Uh, children's ministry also in which we stopped because of the COVID because Malaga is 36 kilometers from Calbayo. Then we have an outreach in Alibaba. It's just uh, 16 kilometers from the church. Uh, I have the Bible study there with 15 people 
and they are ready to baptize but uh, because of covid <laughs> because of the covid it did not postro and we have also the children's ministry in that area because of covid we were not able to go there you cannot enter the barangay because uh, there are tanod so we'll monitor you then at present we have the, the students in the church we, we are five learning the in LIC because that was we learned before in LIC because of COVID we stop we, we stop but after that it was already three Sundays that we go on and this uh, five uh, that had been discipled uh, now is helping me to preach in the church. It is Marco, Mar one is Marco, Jubin, Jubir, Ephraim, and myself. I am doing the preaching in the church and relibo kami ngalima. Sometimes I invite, sometimes I invite from the outside also to preach in the church. Before I have invited Pastor Henry <laughs> to come to our church. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very detailed. Thank you. Kuya Danny. Good evening, everyone. I'm Danny Fantebella, and a retired architect, uh, now uh, leading a life group uh, together with uh, Tony Boboy Borja. I've been with, uh, with TBC since its founding in 1993. Well, so we belong to the Takbaban Bible Community Church. So I'm excited with this uh, class. Uh, I've been looking forward to having a formal uh, training like this. I wish uh, we had this kind of training long before, but now it's a reality. Thank you, Tim Spears, for uh, thank God for bringing you here to us. So in our region, now we can have our uh, distance learning. Yeah, amen. It's really God. It's not me. It, 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 yes. I, I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just here. I'm just, I'm, I'm along for the ride, Lang. Yes. Thank you. You're God sent. Thank you. Thank you. Kuya Ray Pagilan, go ahead and introduce yourself and, uh, Hello, team. Oh, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> We're just exchanging. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'm still fixing. I'm still fixing my. What do you call this? My. Uh, anyway, I'm Ray. I'm Ray Pangilan. I live in. I live here in San Jose. So, I work as a employee in B. Johnson. At the same time, I do. Uh, what do you call this? Volunteer preaching and life group leader for Medreps. Thank you, volunteer preacher. It's a pulpit supply. It's good. It's more than that. It's good. He, he does a good job. Um, so the next is uh, Kuya Ber I'm going to mess this up. Please forgive me. Uh, Virgilio? Virgilio De Dave Aneris. <laughs> Go ahead. I apologize. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Virgilio. Virgilio, that's right. Okay, Virgilio. I am Virgilio Neres, but I am known in TBC as Dave. Okay. Uh, my home church is Tacloban Bible Community, and I am one of the core leaders of the youth ministry and also a life coach. Yun lang po. Dave, I'm, can I just call you Dave? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm fine, sorry. it's fine. Forgiven. <laughs> your name, you looked familiar, but I was like, oh my goodness, it's a different name. I don't know what to do. So, um, great. Thank you so much. Okay, so, uh, Ati Ana Ediza. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Ana Kistin Ediza. I am uh, currently working as an assistant in Tacloban Bible Community, which is also my home church. I am one of the youth core leader. I'm also uh, preaching in our Indian online and uh, at the same time uh, preaching in our uh, uh, 
training uh, in acceptable to NPDC. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ati Anna. Pastor June Oliv Olivar, it's your turn. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am Pastor John Olayfar. I'm uh, from Mahaplag, Leyte, so southern part of Tacloban. And I am now uh, pastoring uh, Mahaplag Community Baptist Church under Baptist Conference of the Philippines. I am also uh, a chairman of uh, Libel District. And um, else, um, so maybe that's all. That's all uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next is... Uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen A. <laughs> Stephen A. <laughs> Go ahead. Or Mark. Mark, Stephen A. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Mark Stephen Arnell. Okay. I'm from Kalbag City. And I'm working as a social worker in LGU Kalbayog. And I, I was raised in New Life Christian Mission. I'm now helping... And it's about Christian, Christian Fellowship here also in Kalbay City. Thank you, Mark. J just a, a small joke. Diba, there's on ESPN Sa US, Stephen A. Diba, he's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was nice. Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Big fan. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's funny. Anyway, see. You. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Dayako Felipe Jr. I'm going to mess that up. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Ati Pastora Milagros, diba? Loreto? Loreto? Uh, good evening, Pastor Tim. Good evening, everyone. So, I'm Milagros Loreto from Epil Ormoc City. So, my first assignment before, I was an outreach worker of Ormok City Baptist Church. Now I'm already handling a church, a church plant here in our village, in St. Benedict Village, Epil Ormok City. This is a rehabilitation place run by the nuns. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, at present, I am handling two sessions Discipleship lessons on ITEAM. Uh, every Thursday, I handle 15 students. Every Friday, I handle five families in these lessons. So recently, we had baptized four students from this, this discipleship lesson. So I praise God for this opportunity and I'm very much excited for our lesson for our class. Thank you for this opportunity that this is God given. So uh, our church now is Unity Bible Center. We are under BCP, Baptist Conference of the Philippines, Leyte Beleran District. Uh, before we are, uh, uh, we are an outreach church of Ormoc City Baptist Church. So I'm very much willing to study our class, the hermeneutic. So thank you, Pastor Tim, for accepting me here. And for Pastor, Pastor Henry Kuwa. <laughs> thank you so much. God bless. Uh, Pastor Sonny, you're next. I thought I, I thought I, I uh, <laughs> exempted. Oh. <laughs> well, um, uh, I'm Sunny Robley. Um, I also graduate at Baptist Theological College, and uh, my wife also is a uh, graduate of Baptist Theological College. And um, I'm a father to his son. Uh, his name is Ben Aleph. You know, from the Hebrew. <laughs> um, uh, I am currently <laughs> I'm currently stuck here at in Bacolod City because uh, because of the COVID nineteen and um, I desire to go home in, in Leyte and hopefully to uh, do the continuation of my ministry there and also my brothers in Cebu. Uh, but currently my 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 channel of uh, my, my my ministry is uh, more on online preaching. Uh, I have this 
uh, page, which is uh, the, the Gospel Daily Exposition, where I do a series of the Book of James currently. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the preaching ministry that I have right now. And also, um, currently, uh, I currently uh, enrolling in, in CGST uh, for my uh, master's degree. And um, I was introduced to Pastor Tim by Pastor Jose. I'm very thankful for these people because I have learned a lot and it's really good. Thank you so much. Um, good You're to welcome. see you all. And it's, the, the connections, it's really a, a providential a, a, a providential appointment. Past, Pastor Henry, you're next. Uh, good evening, classmate. I am just your classmate, Pastor Henry. Good evening. I, I think Pastor Henry Telega, he's the one that knows everyone. So the, the, all, all the, the spider web goes back to, to Pastor Henry. So thank you. He's done an excellent job mobilizing. We could not be here without Pastor Henry. So I just really want to, to give him thanks. And the Lord has just used him in a powerful way. So I know he won't accept it, but it's the truth. It needs to be said. So, Ziggy. Next, um, uh, Ati Eden. Ati Eden. Funcion. Hello, po. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eden Funcion, but in um, Portugal, na, ano, it's Funcion or in Spanish, but I'd like to read it in English, so it's Funcion. <laughs> Okay, anyway, uh, I'm from PBC, Tacloban Bible Community, and mainly I'm affiliated with uh, the youth ministry in the campus as well. So I'm also a life coach and currently a part of um, the Bible translation to what I want. That's all. Thank you so much, Ati Eden. Okay, next, um, I'm going to mess this up. So, uh, Actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Kuya Ali, Kuya Ali, Oiviko. Oiviko. Go ahead, it's your turn. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Ali Oiviko. I am um, a teacher by profession. I'm a senior high school teacher at San Jose National High School. And I am thankful to, for being part of this. Um, online class uh, that's all thank you pastor tim and thank you Kuya henry thank you for attending great uh so next we have yes uh i own galaxy a30s uh, i'm julius uh, palada president residing at uh, uh, san fernando city la union um member by heart uh, of Tacloban Bible Community yeah. Yeah. and uh, Yellow hey. Officer by Provision. Julius? Uh, thank you for the invitation despite of, uh, despite of uh, distance. Iba naman thank tinaw. you, Kuya Henry, for giving me an opportunity. Naman Julius? Hindi <laughs> na makilala ka. Oh. You're welcome. Next, yeah. who do we have here? Who else? Okay. Okay, <laughs> he moved. He moved. He moved to the other side. Okay, great. Thank you so much for it's 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 good to meet you for the first Julius. Time. Julius, liwani ti mo galaksi ti mo ngaran para ra kumilala imo kay itim naong di na nakikilalaan kay guwa pa rin duro kuno. Kalaga, Pio Lo, Pio Lo Pascual. <laughs> okay, okay, copy. <laughs> okay, so next, the next person we have is going to be uh, Roldan Kanyete. Kanyete? Roldan? Hey, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Oh, yeah. Okay, good, good evening, classmates. Thank you for uh, adding me to this uh, class. And I'm Pastor Roldan Kanyete from... Uh, City Bible Fellowship of Maras Maras, Tacloban. The pioneering uh, pastor and uh, in a mission work. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Thank you, Pastor. Next, uh, Ira, you're next. Hi. Hello. Narinig pa ako? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, I'm, my name is Ira Tayoni. I'm residing in Independential Street, Tacloban City, and I'm currently working as a photo editor in Photo Hub, Night Studios, and I'm from TBC, and I'm also leading a life. That's all. Good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. It's great for you to be here. Next, uh, Kuya, Kuya, Dr. Kunz. Dr. Kunz. Hello, everyone. I'm Kunz Solis. I'm a doctor by profession. I'm living here in San Jose. And uh, I work as a physician, community physician in Pindabak, Dao Samar. Thank you, team, and Kuya Henry for inviting me here in the hermeneutics class. You're welcome. It's good to see you. It's so good to see you again. Okay. All right, so we still have Liam. Liam, you're next. Liam. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Liam from TBC. Um, I am a ministry intern. I'm in my third year and youth core leader and a life coach and preacher. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Then does we, he look like Does he look like Steve Curry? Yeah, maybe I think so. <laughs> we have so many. Uh, we have so many famous people in the the class. <laughs> Next, we have. Let me just check here. Next, we have um, Ati Joanna. It's good to see you. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. My name is. Joanna Rose Amansha, but TBC people call me Joros. Uh, I'm from, I'm the administ currently a, the administrative head in the club and Bible community, overseeing most of the ministry in, in the church. But my main ministry is in the youth, one of the core leaders, life coach, and also speaker in our engine online. That would be all. Thank, Thank you, you Ati Joanna. That's great. Uh, next, we have um, Ati Karin. Can we try you again? If not, it's okay. Hello, good evening. Okay, na? Uh, okay, na? Okay. Hi, I'm Karin Bugdalan from Tacloban Bible Community. And right now, I'm, I'm a life coach and at the same time, leading the youth ministry. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Karim. It's great at work. Next, we have, let me see here. Who do we have less? Uh, Nanette. Is Nanette here or she's just watching long? Feeling it? Do you guys? Hi, Nanette. Do you want to introduce yourself? Okay. I'm Nanette Villegas from the Lord Harvest. I'm the admin staff. Thank you. Nanette is doing an awesome job. We could not be doing it without Nanette. So thank you so much. She, she's behind the scenes, she's really doing a good job. Thank you, Nanette. Thank you. You're welcome. Next to Nanette is Louie. Together Louis. with Louie. Louie, go ahead, introduce Louis. yourself, Louie. Hi, Pastor Tay. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Good evening, everyone. My name is Louie. Go ahead. Go ahead. One of the youth leaders. At the Lord's service, North Tacloban, and one of the preaching pastor. You know, Paul, thank you. Good to see you. I could not, I was wondering, I could, I did not, my eyes are maybe bad. It's good to see you. Tell a guy. It's good. Ati Joanne. Ati Joanne uh, Hidalgo. Sorry. If you can. Uh, Okay, good evening everyone. So my name is Joanne. I'm living in Tacloban and I'm and I'm from Tacloban Bible Community. So currently I am not part of any ministry. My ministry is figuring out how to be a good mother to my baby. So that's all. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Joanne. And I just want to say that there's no shame in that. We're first called to our family and um, my my wife, I don't know if She's, she's pregnant with our second, and 
her first ministry is to, is to our baby and also to, with the pregnancy. So that is so important. So don't, no shame, tell a God. You're doing Thank you. Uh, Kuya Francis, go ahead. Hello. I am Francis Gipsuma from Abuya Glati right now. And then from the Tacloban Bible Community, I am a worship team member and uh, Indian Core Youth Leader. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Dexter! Go ahead, Dexter. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me well. It's uh, raining hard here. I am Dexter Sabalie, currently residing here in Barangay Arado Palo, just like we are Alex. And um, TBC, Tacloban Bible Community. And um, two years ago, I was leading a life group in, uh, because I was connected to Samaritan Spurs. So after that, um, the life group separated. So hopefully, um, I'll be able to start again. I'm connected now in um, Habitat for Humanity. So, yeah, in Geo also. Thank you, team, for inviting me. And Kuya Henry, thanks for the um, non-stop reminders. <laughs> All the time, 24-7, <laughs> guaranteed, Siggy. So next we have, next we have um, uh, Kirsten, Kirsten Carla. Hi everyone, I'm Kirsten, but you can simply call me Casey. Casey. And yes, I'm from Tacloban City and I'm connected with Tacloban Bible Community. I am an intern and involved with the youth ministry. That's all. Thank you, Casey. I'll try to remember that. Next we have Jerome. Oh, good evening, everyone. I am Jerome William Moore. I am from Tacloban City and I am from Tacloban Bible Community. Uh, I work as a full-time church worker as a steps um, uh, director. Uh, yun lang. Thank you, Jerome. It's good to see you. Thank you so much. Next, we have um, Bon Hidalgo. Bon Hidal Hidalgo. Hi, hello everyone, good evening. And my name is Bon. I am the husband of Joan. Currently, I have no ministry at the moment. Yeah, redundant. So I am from church uh, called TBC. <laughs> so I'm just recently transferred from one church. TBC. From another church. That's all. It's okay. We're, we're, we're happy that you're here. So maybe you'll be a full-time student now in, in theology. We'll take it. We'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Next we have, um, so Galaxy J4 Plus. I, I'm sorry, I don't, who is the Galaxy J4 Plus? Or did we already do that? Ate? Uh, team, Shoni Bandiko. Shoni, Shoni. Shoni, Shoni. Johnny, Dario. Uh, good. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Johnny. Johnny Bandico. I live in Otap, Tacloban City. Uh, I'm a member of the Lord's Service. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ati Shoni. It's great to have you. Thank you. So then the last one we have here, we have several more here. Let me just see. Hold on here. Um, the one with the 1EL2SPVS. J-U. 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 Hello. Uh, hello, good evening. Um, can you hear me? <laughs> uh, hello, uh, I'm uh, Ruel G. I'm a pastor at San Jose. 
Tacloban City and also um, I was ordained four years ago after I graduated um, in theology. So, full-time pastor. Sana siya. Thank you. J Jay, where did you get, where were, did you graduate from? What school? Um, from Rabbi Theological Seminary, an international minister, and also from um, the Chief Minister of Shalom. Okay, thank you. Great. That's good to hear. Thank you. Next. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the, who do we not have? I, have I gotten everyone? Maybe I'm missing someone. Lemuel, go ahead. Lemuel, Lemuel. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Lemuel De Castro, uh, Tacloban Bible Community under Craig Jerome's Life Group. Sometimes I speak at EGR, sometimes I don't. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Lemuel. Uh, Thank you. So do I have everyone? Do I have everyone? Okay. Kaya Banyes. Kaya Banyes. Kaya Banyes. Okay, Kaya, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I am Kaya Banyes. But my real name is Fenella Don Banyes. And currently, um, I'm Ingel, with Ingel. Pastor. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> no, married with three kids. <laughs> and I'm under Pastor Henry Kwa, uh, the Lord's Harvest Tacloban. Nice to have you here tonight. Hey, nice to have you. Thank you, Kwa. Okay, so... Now is everyone, I'm really sorry if I miss anyone else. The, the screens are changing, so I thought it would be easy, but it's in the exact code. It's very hard. Anyone else? There is another one. Came. There's a Kirsten Gallego. There's a Kirsten Gallego. Tapos na, tapos na. I, I think she, she went, oh, Pastor Edwin. Pastor Edwin, go ahead. You, you, you stuck in there. We still have Galaxy A10S and then Ivy Taninias. Okay, my turn. Oh, oh sorry, oh, sige, sige. your turn. <laughs> sige, Ivy, ikaw lang eh. Ikaw lang eh, Ivy. <clears throat> okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Ivy Grace. I'm from Eastern Samar, but I'm already residing in Tacloban. I just transferred just today. And oh. then I'm also, <laughs> yes, and I'm also part of the youth core leaders in Tacloban Bible community at the same time. I'm a life coach. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here, Ivy. Yeah. Have, you, you Jeffrey, 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 where's Jeffrey? I can't even see him. Jeffrey. That's all. Thank you. Okay. I see you there, Jeffrey. Sorry about that. Sorry. You were hiding. Phil. We also have Phil. Phil, where's Phil? Hiding behind Auntie Karine. <laughs> He's hiding. They're hiding from us. Where's Phil? Go ahead, Phil. Good evening. I'm Phil Sedoripa from Tacloban Bible Community, uh, part of the youth core leaders as well, and part of the music team. That's all. Thank you. It's good to see you, Phil. Pastor Edwin, you're the last one. Yeah. Go I'm, ahead. I'm Edwin Espinia, uh, formerly lost but now found because of Jesus Christ. I'm living here at the Club Bible Community. I stay, I sleep, I eat here at the Club Bible Community. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Great. So we, so we have, everyone has been introduced. Goodbye. I did not leave anyone out. Please. There's one here. Larry. Larry. I've seen Larry. Then Larry. He, where's Larry? Larry. You can. You can yeah, Larry. Oh, yeah. Galaxy A10S. Uh, I am Larry Borale uh, from the Lord's Harvest. Uh, one of the leaders, uh, link leaders on PLH. So good evening, everyone, and God bless. Great to see you, Larry. 
Anyone else? You can run, but you cannot hide. Anyone else? Sinofa. Sinofa. It is now eight, uh, 6 57. So we're going to take our first break. So let's take a 10 minute break. If you, we made it through the introduction for students. So I'm so thankful for everyone being here. Thank you for joining us. And it was really good. I know it took longer than I, we had anticipated, but it was really good to hear your, your uh, testimony and just brief things. I took notes. So I, you know, I, it's going to be a long time for me to really get to know everyone, but I just uh, I really thank you and um, thank you for taking the time. Okay, so now we're going into the next section that we're going to be reviewing uh, tonight is the syllabus. So if you've printed out your syllabus or you have it in some type of electronic uh, format, please go ahead and uh, open to the syllabus. That is um, the TH502, TH100 syllabus, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen so everyone should be able to see the syllabus in front of you. And I will try to zoom it so that it's as big as possible. So <clears throat> what we'll do is I'm not going to read through everything. I'll try to, to make some bullet points and highlights. It, it's your responsibility really to read through the, the syllabus. And if you have a question, you can post it on the discussion on the group page or you can send me a private message. So, so really the content you're responsible for, the deadlines you're responsible for, uh, and any type of question or clarification, I'm expecting you to reach out to me. So let's just go ahead without further ado and let's go ahead and work through the, the syllabus. I'll just briefly read the first paragraph. TH502 is a three unit graduate level course which introduces the student to the basic principles of interpretation with the goal of providing them with the necessary tools for navigating through the method and applying the method across a broad range of biblical texts and genres. The course will focus upon these areas in the topic of hermeneutics. A brief history of interpretation, the method of interpretation, applying the, various, uh, the method to various genres and application. It also pays special attention to the biblical text relationship to Christ. So one of, one of the profound things that I, I hope that we can uh, really, uh, some of us are very devout. We've had many years of teaching, of preaching, of studying the word. I, I'm not presuming to think I can teach you something. Um, uh, I do hope that all of us can learn something, though. And, and the one thing I really hope that you will take away above everything else is that whenever we preach, whenever we proclaim the word, we are always proclaiming the word with, a, with special attention on how that word relates to Jesus Christ. How that word relates to Jesus Christ. Sometimes our sermons, there have been times where I've heard sermons where he, Christ is not mentioned one time. And uh, being ambassadors of, of Jesus Christ and not representing, not mentioning him one time, it is a problem. And so I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. We, we've all fallen short in some, some era, in some time, in some, some way. So, so this, is, this is really just um, uh, drawing attention to the need that we have to be including Christ. We have to be including the gospel. And so we will, we will look at, we will unpack what that means, okay? Now there's, there's the TH502 course and then the TH100 course. And so I'll let you read the TH100 course. That's more basic. That's a more basic definition of what, of the expectation of what I have for, for accomplishing. The, the big difference is that in the, in the TH502, you're going to have reading and hermeneutics, and then you're going to be practicing the method, and then you're going to have a research paper. In TH100, the certificate level, you're just going to be practicing the method and then you're going to be preparing a sermon, but the sermon will really be through the method, okay? So, so there, is, there is a different standard there, okay? And as we work through this, perhaps you're, you'll want to make an adjustment in your, um, in your enrollment of, of program. And, and the, the third paragraph just talks about uh, the, the, the differences there. Okay, course objectives. Again, I'm going to read the TH502, and you can look at the TH100. It's going to be a little more basic, but Number one, to understand and apply the hermeneutical method to various biblical texts in various biblical genres with the goal of preparing, uh, of applying it in, in, in uh, their life or in the student's life and the life of the church. 
employ various tools successfully in the hermeneutical process, such as but not limited to Bible translations, commentaries, Bible software, and others. So one of the main goals of this class is to really connect you with resources online. The future is online, okay? So I really want to, to be, we want to be connecting you with, the, with good resources and, and then you practicing using those, okay? And then the third point is just the, the, the writing of an exegetical uh, paper, applying those, those rules. For, for the TH100 level students, the big difference is you'll be preparing a sermon. So it's going to be slightly different, okay? A course outline, just to briefly highlight where we're going. We're going to go through the introduction to hermeneutics. So we're going to do the history of hermeneutics and then the hermeneutical method. Okay, so that's the introduction. And then the bulk of this, of this class is working through various genres. And what I'll do is I'll try to maybe work through one passage of scripture, highlighting things you need to be considering. We'll have... Uh, some, some, some keys to looking at the different genres because you can't apply uh, how you would interpret epistolary genre to how you would apply Old Testament law. <laughs> Old Testament law and New Testament epistle is two different genres. You really have to navigate them differently. So we'll be working through the different genres and, uh, and hopefully you, give you some good tools, give you some good recommendations. Uh, we will be touching on Revelation. So for those from our last study that wanted to do eschatology, one class I'm giving you. <laughs> so it's a compromise. It's a compromise. So Revelation is very Mahir of Telegab, but I was just talking with someone. And uh, Revelation 1.3, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecies, and blessed are the ones who hear and obey the, the words of the prophecy. And so... Uh, Revelation, although it's, a, it, it's sometimes considered a peripheral issue, is really a central book. And in saying that, I am not saying uh, applying all this, this and that. This equals that in our context. And so there is a, there is a, uh, a very powerful message in Revelation. If we know how to interpret if we know how to uh, interact with it. So we'll, we'll discuss that. Uh, We'll discuss that when the time comes. And then lastly, we just have application proclamation. So contextualization and application, getting the big idea. So that's really, so we're moving from the process to working through the different genres to uh, contextualization, getting the big idea. So that, that's, the, that's a bird's eye view of the direction we're going. Um, moving along here. So uh, the one thing that I, I sent out to you, it's a one page, one page, uh, uh, handout for the interpreting the word, interpreting the word method. Okay. So the big picture, the big picture is observe it, uh, study or ex uh, really I combine the two to make it easier. Uh, uh, observe and study. Number, number three is explain and number four is apply. So uh, observe and study is really one. I, I, I changed it from four to three. I'm trying to condense so uh, this missed my edit. So it should just be three steps in the line. You'll see that in the handout. Observe, explain, and apply. Because really the study is within that observe. When, when, when you really get into the details, it, the two is the one. So just ignore the four, it's really just three. It's uh, observe, explain, apply. Very, very, very basic, very, very, very simple. So uh, let's continue on here. Uh, the cloud research tool. So the cloud research tool, which we will do next, is this tool that gives you links to good resources online, Bible software, online libraries, um, uh, online media. And so really the cloud research tool is really a very important tool. And I think when you see it, you're going to say, wow, it is, it, it, it's, it's powerful. Um, it, so that's all that is required for the TH100 for the resources, okay? Of course, you need to have a Bible. You need to have access to the internet. But, 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 but that's it for if you're taking the certificate. For those taking the TH502, there is a lot of reading. So this is where you need to determine if this is something you're going to be good at, if this is something you want to do or not. Uh, uh, the reading each week, you're going to have to read 
many pages. So that's really, that's the difference in the level. Okay, so, uh, and we'll discuss what else you have to do. And so just to really highlight the reading, so you'll have, for, for the first week, you have 78 to 144. So that's a, roughly about 70 pages. The, the next week is 50 pages, the next week. So you're really looking at between anywhere from, I'd say, 20 to 30 pages to 70 pages per week of English reading. So that does take work. That does take some work. So that's something you, you might want to think about, okay? Um, uh, and so I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, uh, these resources. What, what I will do is for those, who's taking the, for those who commit to taking the MA, I will send you in advance the PDF copies of these specific chapters, okay? So you will not get the full book, you'll get just the specific chapter, okay? Um, and, and so we're really, the reading is gonna be comprehensive. It'll be all the way through. Now I will, I will say this, if, if you are in the certificate and, and there's a chapter that you would like to read or to take notes on, you can request it from me. The, the one difficulty is that uh, once you read the chapter, you do need to destroy, unless it's a free, so, some of it will be free online, and so you can have it. But those that have a copyright, once you read it, you have to destroy it because it's, the, it's, it's, it's a copyright. We, we don't want in any way to be um, violating copyright law. So I can, I can loan you the chapter just like a library would loan, you could go to a book and, and check it out. You can read the chapter, you can take notes, you can highlight those things that you like, and then you have to destroy the PDF and just confirm that you do. So, so if there is something you would like to read, like so for example, uh, here, this, this um, interpreting the gospels, uh, this one here, uh, it's actually, if you can see here, there's a link and it's free. So, so there, you can have that. I mean, you just click on it and you get the PDF. Okay, so we'll be looking at some of the resources are like that and you don't have to destroy, it's free access online. But they, there will be specific ones if I email it to you, I'll say, please read, you can take notes, just like you're checking out from a library. Once you're finished reading it, you need to delete it, okay? So we will be following the same procedure as if you went to a, a library you checked out the book or you went to the library, you just read it, and then you put it back on the shelf. That, that's, that's the procedure, if you can imagine, the, the vision. But we need to be strict, not strict, because uh, we need to be, have a good conscience between God and man. So I understand there's different laws in different countries, but we're, we're maintaining the American standard for, for, for the sake of the authors, okay? Um, uh, moving along here, uh, moving along here. So course requirements. So. Uh, the CT level, the CT level, there's going to be four. There's going to be four uh, areas of assignments that you need to commit to doing. Number one, class attendance. So the class attendance, you can watch it live or delayed. We will, we're, we're recording this class. We will put it on YouTube. And then, and then um, uh, we will, we will, uh, uh, also have the live class. So you, you, the preference is for you to attend the live class if you have bad internet or you can't make it because of a ministry or work, that's fine. Tomorrow we will post the video and then you need to finish that video before the next week, okay? So at the end of the semester, I, I, I will give you a PDF that you have to sign out. Uh, you know, you will, you will initial that you watched all the classes because that's part that's part of the educational process is watching the, the, the class attendance, watching the lecture. So that's 25% that's of your grade. If you, if you watch all of it, it's 100%. So <laughs> it's very nice. It's, it's, it's money in the bank. They say in the US, money in the bank. It's guaranteed. So just do it, just do it. Uh, you can have your coffee break. You can watch it on a Friday night. Um, and the other benefit too, Mother Competent, is that I try to edit out the, I will edit out the breaks. I will edit out that, that any type of wasted time. So it's not really three hours. Maybe it's two hours and 40, two hours and 30 minutes. So just throughout your week, just watch it, okay? Um, I will also say, Mount Competent, if you are late to class by less than 25 minutes, you don't have to watch it. But let's say, for example, you come 
at 7, you come after 6.25. You need to watch the time that you missed, okay? So, so if, you, if, you, if you came at 25 minutes or later to class, you need to watch that 25 minutes, okay? If you came at 7 p.m., you need to watch the first hour, okay? So I, I am looking that you watched the full video. So I am... <laughs> I know, I was a student for a long time, I know. And I'm not saying anyone would do that, but, I, but it's just, we need, to, we need to hold the standard. Uh, Dr. Ricky and, and Dr. Boyette, you know, they're holding me accountable. They're watching me, so I need to be watching you. So I am under authority and I'm over authority. So, so we, need to, we need to hold the standard. Uh, number two, um, assignments. Number two, number two, assignments. Uh, each week the student will be given assignments specifically pertaining to the interpreting the word method and the example text and genre that we'll be discussing throughout the semester. Assignments will be given as the semester progresses. So I will give an assignment tonight before we leave. And so uh, that's 25%. So uh, I am looking, I'm not looking at, especially at the CT level, I'm not looking to beat you with a stick or try to catch you. If you've, if you've completed the assignment, number one, you've completed the assignment. Number two, it's your own work. And number three, you've given an honest effort, okay? I will be very merciful. I'm not looking to nitpick or to judge your grammar or to say, oh, he didn't say this. Um, I do want an honest effort, okay? Um, I don't want, we'll talk about this later, but no copy and pasting and needs to be your own work. If you're quoting something that's really good, you can have many quotes, okay? Um, you can't have all quotes, but but I want it to be your own work. I, I want, I want, uh, uh, as expositors of the word, we need to be able to explain. We need to be able to explain. I understand you're doing it in English and it's harder than in Tagalog or Waray Waray or Cebuhano. And so um, I'm very merciful with that. I'm very merciful with that. Um, don't feel intimidated by the level, but I, but I do want you to be interacting. And if, if there's a situation where you really, it's hard to write in English and you want to write in Waray Waray, or you want to write in Tagalog, we can make, for, at the CT level, we can make an exemption, and I will have someone help me uh, with, with the grading there, okay? So just privately message and, and request that you would use a different language. Um, but if, if you are using English, and maybe you're using it at work, you have to use English, okay? So, <laughs> so, so we, can, we can make an adjustment, because again, the primary purpose is not to, to be or to be difficult. It's really for you to learn, okay? So, so just be thinking about that. But for those who are using English, um, this is also helping your professional development. So this is only a benefit, even though it's hard, it's, it's, it's a benefit for you. Um, uh, so those are the assignments. Uh, sermon project. So uh, one of the assignments for next week is that you will choose a short passage of scripture at the most three verses. I would prefer two verses where, where you will work through the semester and prepare a sermon using the full process, using the full process. So, so I want you to pick a passage of scripture. It should, it should be a significant passage, but it can be no more than three verses. I really recommend one verse or two verse. If you do three verses, it's going to be very long. So my recommendation to you would be one or two verses. Um, so perfect. Yeah. So, so, so my recommendation would be one verse, it, it could be two or three verses. Perhaps two verses will probably be a good medium. Um, but for example, uh, like Romans 1, uh, 16 and 17, we will work through. So you can't choose that passage. But, um, but yeah, there could be different verses. If someone wants to do Psalm 1, 1 to 3, if someone wants to do so, so, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, like that. So just be thinking about what passage you want to choose. So yeah, so I want you to be picking a passage, okay? One to three verses, one to three verses. Whatever you choose, it's gonna be long. So, so uh, just be thinking about that. And by next week, have it selected. Now you should, get, you should get permission from me before you select. So when you choose your verse, you can send me a private message and say, this is the verse I wanna choose. Or if you wanna come on Tuesday night with several possibilities, because maybe one will be vetoed, okay? Because I'm... I need to look at it to make sure that it's going to give you the full experience. Okay, so if you choose a very Jesus wept <laughs> veto, 
so, so uh, yeah, so yeah, that's an extreme example, but I am looking. So for example, you could choose the Great Commission. That's a very good, if you choose Matthew uh, 28, 18 to 20, yes, you can do that, okay? And several people can do it. As long as they don't really share, that would be a great passage. So be thinking about what, what verse or what verse uh, passage of scripture you want, you want to use, okay? And then the last part is a, a midterm and a final exam. I only have a final exam there. I need clarification if we're also doing a midterm. But, but we have to have testing. And so there will be a time to test some of the basic knowledge. Again, this is not a got you. It's not, you're not going to have to study for 10 or 12 hours. There'll be a review sheet. There'll be basic questions that you need to answer. And so we, we do need to be testing, but it's not going to be very Mahira. So um, but my honest comment to you is if you committed to at least, in addition to watching the lecture, at least two to three hours per week, at least two to three hours per week, you should, uh, per week, budget out two to three hours, you, you should be able to finish all the assignments, okay? And the other thing too is that you can use these every week in your sermon. So there's really no excuse. This has direct benefit in your, in your ministry, okay? Now for the, the Master of Arts in Theology, same thing, you have to attend all the classes. Reading assignments, so this is a new, this is a new requirement. This is where we separate CT from MA, okay? You need to do all the reading, and then there's going to be a weekly reading report, okay? Uh, this will take some time. It's not stressful. Uh, you're going to be answering, uh, you're going to be doing three things in that report. Number one, what was the most profound truth that you learned? So you're going to do the reading and you're going to, you're going to have one topic sentence of this is the most profound truth that I saw. And then you're just going to describe it. It should be at least three to four, at least four sentences. Okay. And then the next thing, number two is going to be what is something that you disagree with or want further investigation? So you're, you can say something like, uh, I disagree with that, 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 that. And then you're going to explain why you disagree with it. Again, four sentences, it can be more, I don't want a thesis. <laughs> so four to six sentences to long, and plus it's, it's time for you. And then number three is just one sentence. What is a question you would like to discuss? So again, this is just to make sure that you're doing your reading. This is also to make you reflect upon the reading. Again, completion grade, Manga Kapatid. What I will do is I will count. Did he have four sentences? Did he have a total of nine sentences? Okay. And he read. Yes. It's 100%. So that's really what I'm looking for. I'm not going to assess or say, oh, that's not a good question. That question is, is, is bad. I won't. It's just a completion lab, okay? And then the assignments is the same as the CT. And then the difference will be the exegetical research paper. So here, again, you're going to be writing a research paper. This will probably be eight to 10 pages. And again, before you become so stressed, I need clarification from uh, Dr. Boyette, but my desire would be for you to, if you do my method, it's not as much a research paper. You'll still be doing the research, but it's going to be a different format. So for example, I will have you uh, summarize the background information, authorship. So it's, it's really more like a description. It's not a very difficult research where you have a thesis and then you have four supporting points and then you're going, it's, it, it won't be like that. So, you know, Perhaps we can't do that and we have to be strict with the, the thesis research, exegetical research paper. But in, in my seminary in the US, that's how we wrote the exegetical. It was more, it was different components um, like that. And, and I think looking at what the, the description is for the exegetical research paper, I think they're doing the same type of thing. So my hope is that we can just use our method. I need to get clarification. I, I, I think we can, but I don't want to commit until I have the agreement from, I have the agreement from uh, uh, Dr. Boyette, okay? And then lastly, again, the midterm and the final exam, again, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be, uh, what's the word? Um, I'm not out to get you. So it's gonna be basic. It's going to be clear. If you, if you study the, the, if you study the, uh, the, the review sheet, you will be fine.
okay? Um, I won't make any more comments on, on that. You can read in, in the syllabus um, concerning the details. A course schedule, again, just, uh, I actually made this very nice for you. So if you look here, week one, uh, you have what we're, our goal is to do. So we're, we're doing uh, introduction, syllabus, introduction to cloud resource, and then starting the method. And then if you look to the right, you have assignment, <laughs> two different levels, and then there's a check. And so once you finish, check. And it's very easy for you to really track your, your progress, okay? Um, and so uh, there will be points to deducted if your assignment is late. Um, uh, and we'll look at that a little bit later, okay? So this is just highlighting. You can look at this on your own time. Just highlighting the different. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, I have questions re regarding uh, because I took it as as an audit. So am I required to do the all those tasks, which is I like to do also, but so so, yeah, so am are, I required? You, are you taking it for credit or audit? For for audit. Yeah. So for so someone who's auditing, you actually don't have to take you don't have to do any of the assignments. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's up to you. If if you're taking. Hey. If you're taking it for credit or as an elective, um, then you have to do everything. And it has to be new. It, it has to be, it has to be new. If, so it's up to you. So you can audit or take it for credit. It, it's complete, if you all just right. want to audit, it's totally fine, yeah. All right, all right. Thank you, sir. No, no problem. Um, uh, team, yeah. in, the, in the final exam, midterm and final exam, uh, is this an open notes? Yeah, so, let me let me get for for the uh, CT. It will be open notes. Uh, I, well, the, uh, Steam, can we call a friend also? Huh? <laughs> can we call a friend? No, no. <laughs> uh, Pastor Henry, let me get confirmation, Muna, from Doctor Ricky and and uh, Doctor Boyet because that's on our to do list to discuss because. Because again, with the CT, I don't, I don't, if we get accreditation some way through CGST, BTC, they might require the notes to be closed. I just need confirmation because of the CHED, the CHED standard. So yeah, our desire is to have open notes because again, we're, it's not trying to be a get, a, a, a get you, but I just, we can't, uh, I would rather say at this point, no, and then it's a pleasant surprise than yes, and then Sion knows. <laughs> So I want to start low and then go up, but, but we should have an answer within two or three weeks. Let me write that down just to really um, uh, open. Question, follow up, follow up question, Tim, on the exam. Go ahead. Uh, since this, we are, we are studying online, will the exam also be submitted online or yeah. while we are having Zoom or submitted later or what? So what we will do, what we will do because the week, let me just come here, the week of the exam, yeah, so if you look here, the week of the exam is there's no class, okay? So what, what we will do is we will, we will all meet, uh, unless you hear differently from me, we will all meet. I will send the exam ahead of time, and I need your word that you will print, but you will not look. You will print, but you will not look. And then uh, um, we will take the exam from 6 to 9 p.m. Once you're finished, you can, you're done. And then you just need to take a picture or scan it and send it to me. Okay, so that's what we'll do at this point. There might be a different method. I thought about having a proctor, so you need to have a proctor. So it could be your wife. It could be someone else who proctors it for you. We do that in the U.S. Again, I just need to confirm the, the CHED standard of what they require. But we might have a proctor where... Uh, I would send an email to the person who's proctoring it for you. It could be your wife. It could be your pastor. They would print it out, and then you would sit down, and you'd take it. They would take it, and then they would email. Okay, so let me, let me, I think you could actually email. But let, let, me, let me also confirm that um, if we could do the, because the proctoring would be much easier. You don't have to come to the class. Uh, you can just use your wife. As long as she signs and you sign that the integrity, it's fine. Um, any other questions? Uh, team, yes. for those take uh, for those assignments uh, taking CT and those uh, especially okay for those who are taking 
this both both class CT and MAT or something like in how do they how do they send their assignment to you in the form of yeah no okay so so let's I think it's later in the syllabus but I'll just I'm just going to describe it right now if it's not I will clarify so the way that I would like your your assignment is uh, you have my email address in several places the easiest way for me is you you will you will write out uh, you will write it on a docx file or on a um, you can use Google Docs you can use Microsoft docx file or you can use um, the, the Apple uh, notes and then you will email it to me okay you will email it to me um, for those who don't have it's hard for you to do that you can take you can actually just use paper if it's very neat and legible but you need to uh, you need to take a picture where it's very clear. So you need to take the picture and then look at the look at it if it's if, if I can read it. If I can't read it, don't send it to me. But then you can just take a picture and then Facebook message me. So that those are the two ways: picture, Facebook message, or or email. Okay. Um, and again, for the CT, you do not have to type. You can use uh, you can use line paper, but it, it should be white with black ink Milan, white with black ink Milan, and it needs to be legible, um, legible. Actually, I'm thinking every other page, every other line. You should not go every single line, every uh, double space, double space, okay? So that's the, uh, that's the, um, the guidelines. What I'll do, I, I, I will, I'll post an example of the things I want. So I'll post an example of, let me write that down. I'll post an example for the assignment. Can, can we allow our partner to answer for our assignment? <laughs> yeah, so uh, no, that's good. Um, uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna come to that. Let, let's, let's hold the question, let's, let's finish the syllabus, and then if I'm missing something, I just don't wanna do it twice. So, Hold that question. Same. It's great. Yeah, go ahead. Do we have like a partner or group assignment? Yeah, so we're going to discuss that. Let's let's let's. Uh, that's 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 a good question. Let let's continue on, and then we will discuss it at the very end. Okay. Um, so let's just move along here. So this is the outline. You can look at that at your own time. So here's additional guidelines. So here's here's the guidelines. Um, uh, Number one, you have the class, you have the Zoom, we're already doing that. Number two is that there's a, a YouTube channel, it's interpreting the word, and I'm gonna create a playlist, and then all of the sessions will be in order in the playlist, okay? Um, you, should be, you should be checking the Facebook group, Hermeneutics, EVST Hermeneutics, every day or every other day in case there is something that's posted, okay? And you can also ask, if you have a general question, that you think will benefit everybody, ask it on a post. If you want a private question, message me, or if it's enrollment related, message Henry, okay? Now, concerning plagiarism, okay, so this is coming back to, to Ray's question and also Henry's question. So this is, I'm going to specify the standard and then I'm going to explain it in the group setting, okay? So, but this is just, this is concerning uh, your own work and what you what you uh, present. Okay, uh, plagiarism will not be tolerated. Tolerated. You plagiarize when intentionally or not. You use someone else's words or ideas, or you use someone else's uh, words or ideas, but fail to credit that person, leading your readers to think that those words are yours. Okay, so. Uh, uh, plagiarism on a major project or assignment will result in a fa failing course. Okay, so this is very important. Um, uh, I do not copy or do, or do not um, uh, do not copy or do not use uh, someone else's work. Okay, so so we're again we're going to come back to this group idea, but I want to emphasize uh, your work should be your own. Okay, uh, number five. Cheating will not be will, will not be tolerated. Again, I'm not accusing anyone. We're we're all mature. We're we're all strong uh, leaders, but we are holding a standard here, and and we have to be above reproach. So again, I'm just going over this 
as any other institution would be. Even at the, the graduate level, at, at the, the PhD level, they have this same requirements. Um, cheating will not be tolerated. Cheating is when you use any means outside the specific rules and guidelines in order to complete an assignment, quiz, or an exam. Cheating includes but is not limited to copying another student's answers, using answers or an answer key to answer questions on a quiz, looking at another person's quiz or exam, asking another student a question during an exam, having a student take a picture of an exam and using that picture to prepare for an exam, see academic catalog for disciplinary action against cheating. Okay, so again, if there's a form of cheating uh, on the midterm or the final, that's going to result in a, in a failing course, okay? Failing the course. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, speaking of plagiarism, would you allow us to, to uh, use uh, exegetical commentaries for our research paper and uh, exegetical research yeah. paper? Yeah, so, so now we're going to get into specifics. A great question. Let's look at number, number six. And then I'm going to synthesize all these questions. So you're asking great questions, and I, I, want, I want to bring clarity here, okay? Concerning projects or assignments, do not copy and paste from Bible programs, definitions, etc. Uh, definitions must be rewritten in your own words, or you, um, or you may use them, but you must cite the source from where you retrieved information. Direct usage should be marked with quotations. If in doubt, use a citation. So if in doubt, you can use as many citations as you want. There's no limit. Um, uh, but you, but but you must use. You must you must quote the source uh, if you're going to use it. This keeps uh, you safe and above reproach. It is honorable to, to to cite sources. It's acceptable to cite sources unless your entire work is copied, which you should not do. Okay. So um, yeah. Uh, um, Going back to, to, to Henry and then to, to Sonny and then to Ray, okay? So this is saying within the context of the rules and definitions, what I will allow in this setting, because this is a workshop setting, we're going to, once everyone solidifies which program they're in, I will divide you out into groups, okay? I will divide you out into groups and you can work together uh, in, in the assignments, okay? But, but, you 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 cannot in, in the group your your assignment is your own work so if you have a question you can ask there can be a clarification but you're writing out your own because this is not one answer fits all there's going to be questions observations different things so you need to do your own work you cannot copy uh, or you cannot split out the assignment i will do part one you will do part two and then we'll combine no no no, no, no. you cannot do that you're all doing your own work, but you're working in a workshop in the sense that if you're stuck, if you have a question, you can ask, or if someone says, hey, I have a great resource, okay, share it, no problem, okay? But uh, we, we all know, we all know what's, what, what's happening here. We're all working together, you're, you're typing up your own work, you're presenting your own work, okay? There's no direct copying and pasting, um, and, and, and uh, there's no, because again, you're short circuiting the, the process, okay? So we'll divide you into groups. You can work together. You can ask questions. Um, uh, you, but but I, I, what I don't want you doing is splitting it up and then just one person doing one, one other person doing another. There is that process. Is, is, that, is that clear? Is that clear with what? Any, any further questions or comments or clarifications? Uh, one clarification. Uh, the homework, the homework, whatever, the, whatever, the report on the study of a certain, what is usually the deadline? Is it on the day of the next scheduled yeah. class or one day before, two days before, yeah. or what is the deadline? Yeah, so, okay, so, so the, the deadline, the deadline for, I'm, uh, that's a great question. Maybe I didn't put it, but I need to add the deadline. Um, so just to make it crystal clear so it's easy, the deadline is, will be 6 p.m. of the start of class each week. So you need to email, so for example, let's just go back up to, so, so assignment number one, okay? Assignment number one here, everyone can see that, okay? This is due by 5.59.59 on Tuesday next week. So you could literally email it, 
559.50, and it's fine. It's fine, okay? If you can show me that your email stamp is 559, I will accept it, okay? Um, I don't want you emailing it during class. If, you, if, you're, if, it's, if it's late, just wait till after class. But the reason for it being right before class is because especially for, for all the assignments, we will be interacting with the assignments. So that's why it's important. We will go over the assignments in class. We will, we will discuss them in class, uh, especially the reading as well. So it's, it's going to be just right before 6 p.m. each week. That will, that will be what it's due. Okay. Great question. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. Uh, clarification team uh, in making the what do you call that reflection report yeah yeah yeah, yeah, do, yeah. You, do you specify any format any any whatever whatever requirement in the format uh, etc like number of pages number yeah. of references etc i would like it to be i would like it to, i'll post an example but i would like it to be one page if it's two pages that's fine. I would prefer it to be one page because I don't want it to be burdening for you. But again, just in paragraph form, four sentences with a topic sentence for each paragraph. And then the third paragraph is just one sentence. So it can just be paragraph one, paragraph two, one sentence, and that's it. And it's just, you could, you could, you could do a one paragraph, two paragraph, and then three. I don't want it in a bullet point format because I do want us to be practicing our composition professionally. You know, I know that you're already a master, but, but I, for all of us, you know, the paragraph form is really, you're, we're thinking in, in sentences and paragraphs. So just, yeah, it can just be three, three, three paragraphs. Really, it's two paragraphs in one sentence. Okay. Um, I will also have an example because at the top, I want, the date it's due, the assignment description. Um, and so I will have an example, just I will do an example for, for, for you um, so that it's clear, okay? Uh, team, yeah. uh, the, the, font, uh, the font, the size of font is yeah. facing. Yeah, so I'm gonna make it standard now. 12, uh, uh, it's going to be uh, uh, Calibri, or Times New Roman, so Calibri, or Times New Roman, font, 12, 12 font, and it should be double spaced. It should be double spaced. I think, I think, uh, I, uh, uh, we suggestion earlier, na, yung, we have a, a, piece, a template for how to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna post an example, maybe tomorrow, I'll post an example on the, the Facebook group of just what it should look like. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you, you'll still have to create right. it yourself, but you'll see that pattern. I'll, I'll post the pattern. Great, great clarification. I'll, I'll post that template for you. I'll just do one. I'll do one with something unrelated so that you can see, you can see um, what I'm looking for, okay? Any other questions or comments? Good, oh, go ahead. One more, one more thing, one more thing. Uh... The paper for those who are taking the math for the paper. When do we start looking for the topic or the research topic? This uh, week. This yeah. week. Yeah. So we will. I'm going to really be on top of you it, because it will be so easy. Each week we'll be working through the method, and I will be giving you so that by the the end of the semester, it will really be tapos na. You will just. That's it. So. Some people, some teachers are just like, here's the research paper, it's due here, that's it. But I'm going to really be on top of you. So next week, your assignment will be to, to choose a passage of scripture and to have it approved by me or to have several so that I can approve it at the class, okay? Um, I will also post examples. If you're unsure, I will post a bunch of examples, maybe 20 examples or 30 examples that you can choose from, okay? Um, but again, one to three verses max. One to three verses max, because you will understand if it's six verses. <laughs> once you see, you'll be like, "Sai, oh, what did I do?" And you're locked in. Once you choose, it's yours. So, Sigi. 
great, great question. All right, any other questions? I don't want to, I don't want to ignore anyone. Anyone else? All right. Is there any maximum pages for our exegetical research paper? Um. There, so it really will depend. If you choose one verse, it's going to be shorter than if you choose three. So it's going to be flexible. Typically for each section, you're going to see, I have it broken down to specific steps. So you'll do like a, a structure analysis, you'll do a background study, you'll do a context study. Like in the context study, I only want three to four sentences per paragraph. So it's really, I am even specifying the length of your, of your paragraphs um, to, to keep you on point. Because when you're preparing a sermon, just to be clear, this, this whole process, unless you're a, unless you're a full-time teaching pastor, where this is your only responsibility, you could not do this whole process every week. You know, some, some big pastors do it, but most cannot. So, so, um, I'm trying to keep you, I'm trying to also develop your conciseness in working through the method so that it's, it's attainable. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll work through that. But yeah, I would say that again, I can't, I just can't give a number because it's so, it's so flexible, but you, you'll see that really it's going to be as you're filling out the assignments, it, it's going to really, uh, you'll see that it will just limit itself. It'll limit itself. Yeah. Great question. Anyone else? Uh, Tim, shall we only what what version of the Bible shall we use? Yeah, so we'll get into that. There, there's many different versions. Uh, the answer is yes, <laughs> meaning to say that you should use several versions of the Bible. So, so um, yeah, so I, you will be referring to several because they will help you in your Bible study. So, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> or I should say many. So we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. Great question. Excellent question. Um, it, because I can't see everyone, the person in the future, if you ask a question, just say, this is Sonny, this is Alex, this is Henry, and just ask your question because I want to be hearing, hearing, and then also hearing your name. So great. Anyone else? Anyone else? I want the King James only, 1611. Oh my goodness. You want to know something? When we do Bible translations, I, I have an original 1611 facsimile. I will show you a picture and, and everyone can see how impossible it is. So <laughs> I'm going to include that in the PowerPoint. Original, as you will see. You will see. Great, great. <laughs> Maybe you will back out. <laughs> Singy, great, great comment. Anyone else? Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> Edwin, I know now that I'm going to have someone who's going to be troublemaker. We might identify <laughs> the one who will be the jokester in the group. Good. We need the, the comic relief. We need the comic relief. Anyone else? I'm going to go on. Ziggy. If a question comes, if a question comes up, do not hesitate to post or to ask, okay? Because um, it, it will come up till I got, so. Uh, Tim, uh, Henry, I'm Henry. If any word of encouragement? It seems like uh, uh, our our team is now touching the table. So I want to say this. I want to say this, Mungo Kapitan. I want to say this is that this seems overwhelming. This seems overwhelming. I want to assure you that it's it's uh, not as much as you think it is. Uh, Number one, number two, uh, it, if you are procrastinating, it will be, it will become, it will feel like a burden. Okay, so I do think every week, I, I think every week the, the setup and my 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 plan is to keep on top. So every week, if you're doing the assignments, not looking like when Diba, when I'm running, I will run. Not now, I'm lazy. I'm not really running. Before I would run three miles, five miles, ten miles. My father used to say. Don't look out. Look at the feet. And you, just, you focus on the here and the now. And then before you know it, you're going to look up and you're at the end. So I, I do want to say just focus on each, week, each week's assignments. Don't worry about, like, I cannot write this paper. If you, just, if you do the assignments that I give you each week, you can do it, number one. Number two is that 
uh, um, it's during the times of adversity that we grow. It's not the times of, of, uh, of rest. And so there is a time for us to grow here. Um, I'm growing as a teacher. I'm growing. In, in, I'm also learning. I am learning new things uh, as well. So we're all doing this together. And um, we can do it in Christ. Without Christ, yes, it would be a mountain. You cannot do it. But with Christ, all things are possible. And so um, I do want to also emphasize, if you feel like this is a mountain, you can do, you can do the, the certificate. You can do the certificate. And if you're in the certificate and you're afraid, you can also audit. If you just want to audit, uh, there's no credit. And you could not get the actual certificate at the end if you audit. But, but maybe this is just, maybe you're saying, maybe this is not for me. Just audit the line. Maybe at the end of the semester, you're like, no, I want to do this. And then you can take for credit. Okay, so there's different options. And I want to say this, Monk. Uh, go ahead, Pastor Edmund. Uh, I, I guess you need to clarify about the audit and the credit thing because some of these people here doesn't really know what's the audit and what's okay, the Okay, great. Okay. Okay, perfect. So the, the great, great clarification. So... There's, there's, whenever you take a class in any, in a college, in a graduate, postgraduate, you have credit or audit. Audit means you're just watching it, you're just attending, but there's no other responsibility. You can even miss attendances, there's no responsibility on you. People will audit just to gain the knowledge, but they don't, they don't have the time to, to take it for credit. Um, there isn't really a cost for the certificate level, so some people won't do it for credit because of the cost. Okay, um, uh, but so that's audit, all right. And so the, the credit is where you're 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 going to you you're 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 locked in at the assignments for all the assignments, and you will at the end of the program receive a certificate because the certificate certifies that you've not only received the knowledge but you've also applied the knowledge. So uh, the certificate or the MA, the degree, the MA degree, is you, you're, you, you have the knowledge, you have a level of proficiency in the knowledge, and then in, in the theological realm, because we're also pastors and leaders, you're also maintaining that Christian ethic. So you have the, 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 moral, the moral example as well. So again, if someone just wants to audit, if you wanna change your status to audit, you're more than welcome to. Uh, no one will actually know. You can just attend. No one will know. Whatever, whatever, whatever uh, program you're taking, um, people won't really know. It's it's really it's really confidential. Perhaps if the groups are set up, and, because I will I will separate according to level, so maybe people will know by that. But um, yeah, don't feel pressure. You can do audit. You can do credit. You can do certificate of theology. You can do MA with all the qualifications. So. My recommendation is really pray. Don't make a decision tonight. Pray about it. Maybe you can talk to me privately, talk to Pastor Henry privately. By Friday, you should make a decision. So talk to some other people, uh, make an adjustment, and then Friday, you can have your decision. Um, or you, the other thing, Mama Kappa did, is you can try the assignments, and then maybe after trying the assignment, by next Tuesday, you say, oh, I can't, this is too hard, let's just audit. So I, so I won't ask for your decision until next Tuesday. I, I am, I'm only asking that you make a decision by Friday so that you can, start, you can start doing the assignments. But if you're really unsure, you want to wait until Tuesday, that's fine as well. But pray about it. Talk to your spouse. Your family comes first. Talk to your church leaders and, and make your decision, okay? So... One more question. Uh, Tim, this is Boboy Boboy. Uh, suppose, just suppose we are able, one, we were not able to submit the reflection report for a particular week. Do you give a chance that we can submit it on the next week? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. after, after the week has passed, uh, like uh, make up class or uh, whatever you call it? Yeah. So, so if, you, if you're late, um, it's five points. Now, he says five points per, okay, that's extra people. So what, I'll, what I'm going to say is uh, per week, it's going to be five points per week. Five points per week. Meaning to say, if you turn in a reflection paper late by one week, instead of getting 100, you would get a 95. If you turn it in two weeks late, instead of getting 100, let's say you, you complete it fully, 
you were to get a hundred, you would get now get a ninety. Okay, so so you're you're being you're being um, uh, for your assignments, you're you're receiving a five point penalty per week that it's late. Does that make sense? So you could you could hand it in five weeks late and still get a passing grade theoretically, if, if everything else was was good. Okay. So again, I'm not trying to crush. I'm not trying to crush. Um, uh, I do need clarification because I'm, re I'm referencing the student handbook from CGST. So I, I, that, will be, that, will be the assign, that will be the requirement for the CT. I need to confirm that we can do that for the MA. Um, uh, if you look here, the exegetical paper, because it's a major project, it's five points per day. Everyone can see that here, five points per day. you can see here, it's five points per day. So again, it's because of their standard, the, the CHED standard. So for the, C, for the certificate, five points per week, I will confirm that for other assignments, I have the flexibility to choose. I think I do have the flexibility, but let me confirm. And if it is the case, I will just do five points per, per week, okay? Um, EBST, we're still developing our course catalog and our all our all our procedures and we don't yet have a late policy some schools have a some schools have a strict policy some schools are like it's just up to the student i had one teacher he's like no late assignments in the professional world there's no such thing as late the deadline is the deadline if you hit it at late sayog that was his procedure for engineering no late zero <laughs> so so but we will not have that we will not do that <laughs> great question anyone else anyone else um, ah! <laughs> um, excuse me, sir. Um, um, is it possible for other, like, other interested people to enroll next week or, like, something like that? Yeah, so what we'll do is next Tuesday is the cutoff telega, just because. Okay. But, but the, the qualification is they would have to watch this video and they would have to. So, they would have to double time because, because they could attend next week, but then they have two assignments and two videos due the following week. So it couldn't be like, I would give them one week. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. Great, thank you, Joanne, for that question. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I just have a clarification on uh, the sermon project. Uh, it would be possible that you can also give us a sample of what we'll be doing. Yeah, so don't worry. What we'll do is I'll, I'll work through the procedure first, and then each week I will work. We will do an example. We will do we, I will work through the process just as you are working through the process. I will work through the process with one text that I choose. So I've already given you my cards. I'm choosing Romans 1, 16 to 17. So that's my passage that I, I, I it's two verses. I've chosen two verses. So yeah, so you will have an example to work from. So great, great question. Um, um, what we'll do is for each section, I will do the example and then, and then you, will, uh, you will go do that same portion on your own. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. A anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, let me just finish here. So um, I want you to keep, keep everything, keep everything. We're in a new era of electronics, uh, electronic uh, communication. Things can get lost. They can be accident accidentally deleted. I keep everything and I back everything up. So when you do an assignment, I need you to keep it. Um, uh, just in case something is lost, okay? We, we, will, we will be as perfect and as careful as we can with privacy, with your personal information, with, with your, your assignments, but there's always a chance that something could be deleted, something could become corrupted, that's happened. It's crazy, but it happens. So every assignment you do, keep it, don't delete it. And actually you should be keeping it because I still refer to my, I still refer to my notes from when I was in, when I was in seminary. So 
yeah, I would recommend that just as a professional and as a ministry practice, you should keep everything, but I'm requiring this for the course. So if, for example, something accidentally was deleted or lost, it was unintentional, I, I, would, require you, I would require you to do it again, because again, uh, you need to be keeping. Now, one option could be for your backup, just print out a copy and save it. Just print out a copy and save it, and that's your backup. Okay, if you don't have a backup external or you don't, or you're not using a cloud, I would recommend using it's free Google Drive. It's free. I would recommend setting up a, a Gmail account and using Google Drive and having your documents on your computer, on your tablet, and then back it up to Google Drive. That's two places already, two places now. If you need help, we can have someone help you set that up. So, again, we're thinking new normal, new technology, new everything. Okay, so this is the future. Uh, the, 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 the school was revolutionary. Uh, the school, the book was revolutionary from papyri. And the, the next step in education, the next step in theology is now online. This is the future. This, this, will, this will never change. So we need to start practicing now. And um, I have faith. You are just as advanced as the U.S. We're using the same thing as the U.S., and so we, we can do, we can hold the standard here. Okay. Okay. So it's already 8.11. Let's take another, let's take another uh, 10, uh, a 10 minute break. So we'll come back at 8.20 and then we'll start the cloud, uh, the cloud resource for our last, our last section. We're a little bit running behind. It's fine because our, our um, introductions took longer than the than normal. We have a buffer class, so we're okay. So we'll, we'll be back a little bit, but it's going to be fine. So let's take a, a 10 minute break. We'll come back at uh, 8, 8, 12 uh, sharp. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we finished the syllabus, and so now we are on to the review of the cloud resource tool. The cloud resource tool. So at this time, let me just go back to my... So... This is the table of contents for the cloud resource tool. I posted it online. I posted it on the, the, the group page. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to work through this. I'm going to first just talk through it and then I'll go back and I will actually, I will actually uh, start using it as an example so you can see how I'm using it, okay? So uh, the way this works is you have, you have a title page, you have some other information, and then you have the table of contents. The design of the table of contents is to not only, is to not only give you the different uh, categories or, or functions, uh, the different, the different uh, resources online, but also it's to be like, it's like a quick link. So for example, if I want to go to the uh, theology on the web. I'm looking right here. I want to go to theology on the web. I can just click. I can click on it, and then it immediately sends me to to the location theology on the web. Okay, so so the table of contents is very powerful because it's almost like like a browsing option. You can just look look for the resource that you want to study, and then you just click. I want to study. Step Bible. It automatically brings me to Step Bible. And then once I go to Step Bible, then I can just, what I'll do is I'll click on the Step Bible, and then it automatically takes me to that web page. Okay, so everyone sees that there. Everyone's tracking with me. So it's a very powerful tool to very quickly and efficiently bring you to the location that you want to to the area that you want to study. Let, let's go back. Let's just go back here. So that's an example of how it works. Okay, so let me just go back through here and talk through these things with you. Um, uh, looking at the big picture here, right now there's really uh, five. There's five categories, and some of them are kulang, some of them are big. And so I wrestled with, giving you a ton of different resources, but I felt as if that if I gave you just so many different resources, it would be hard for you to focus on one or two. Maybe you're going to ones that aren't as fundamental. So 
what I will do is maybe throughout the semester, once a month, once every two months, maybe in the midterm, I will update this with a lot more resources, okay? Uh, I do wanna say that right now, the resources that you're actually seeing on your screen, it's so great. There's so many resources, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, uh, but but there's five, so there's five different categories. Number one, online library. So if you look here, online library, these are secular libraries with archives of books, mainly books, okay? Some of them will have uh, journal articles, some of them will have other kinds of media, okay? So, so archive.org, Google Books, Open Library, Project Gutenberg have just a thousands upon thousands of books, hundreds of thousands of, of eBooks, okay? So um, instead of going down to your library at, at your high school or going down to the library in, um, uh, on Project Gutenberg, I actually looked up the works of Brazil. <laughs> uh, Jose Rizal, his works are on Project Gutenberg. <laughs> So, so, yeah, it, it's hard. There's many. There's so many resources. So uh, there is, you do, um, there is a learning curve, but I want to say that it's so powerful. Okay. Did, did you did you include the BibleArc.org? I think that I think that's a good, that's a good, that's a good resource. Yeah, I, it's on my list. I was debating on whether or not to include it yet. So <laughs> great. I will add that later. I, I want us to. I'll explain why I haven't added Bible Arc yet, but no, that great, great resource. It's so powerful, Diva. So, so we will be coming back to Bible Arc. I will add that later. So, <laughs> you're you're looking okay. at my notes, Sunny. You're you're stealing you're stealing my thunder. Great. <laughs> <We're not laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a lot of other resources. I think even Henry sent me some resources from. Um, from uh, Dr. Stein with uh, Ictos and Bakulog. So there is a lot more resources. There is so much more resources we could add to this. I just, I didn't want to overwhelm you. So I wanted to start small. I want it to be manageable. And then later we will add, okay? Um, so archive, Google Books, Open Library, and Project Gutenberg, tons of resources. Now I want to, I want to do one caveat, one clarification. These are secular libraries. So in the U.S., I don't know about here, but in the U.S., they have the full range of books. So you can have, if I'm using a, a movie analogy, you can have the, the G-rated books, and then you, you can have R-rated books. You can have explicit rated books. So, so there's a caveat in this, this source that, that, you know, you need to exercise caution, especially going to these libraries. Just like if you were to go to the U.S., they have sections where, you know, um, we don't agree with that, but it's but but they're not appropriate for all audiences. So I, I want you to 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 just be aware of the caveat, to be aware that that these are that these are secular libraries, and you need to use caution. I would recommend using uh, software protection. Uh, I would recommend to be careful where you go. There could be something inappropriate. There could be something that for sure we don't support. But again, it's just connecting you to the library. In the U.S., they would encourage us. We had our main Christian library at the seminary, but we were encouraged to go to other libraries to look for resources. So that's why we're including, we're including uh, the online library, okay? Um, the next section is online theological libraries. Online theological libraries. Again, these have so many online theological resources, more than so many, okay? I don't know how else to say that. Um, Christian Classics, Christian Classics Ethereal Library has classics all the way, they have full, they have all the early church fathers, they have uh, Scaff's church history, they have John Calvin's you know, we don't agree with everything he says, but they have his resources. They have Augustine's resources. They have, um, they have a lot of the Puritans. Puritans are very good expositors of the word. Uh, they have John Bunyan, Pilgrim's Progress. They have, uh, oh my goodness, they have uh, Matthew Henry. They have, I think they have pulpit commentary. So again, 
Christian Classics Ethereal Library, just so many different resources. And you can read online. We'll, I'll show you an example of how to do it. You can read online. You can download the PDF. Um, I always recommend downloading the PDF if possible because you can use the PDF tools to highlight. And then you can also make comments in the side. You can make a note that you can save. Um, but we'll come back. So Christian Classics is just so many historical theology, Christian, the, uh, Christian church history, uh, so important. They have the Creeds of, of the Faith by Philip Scaff. I mean, just so much, so many resources. Um, and I'll go and show you some examples. Uh, Open Access Digital Theological Library, again, has multiple, when we go there, they, they have multiple different uh, search engines. They have different archives. Again, tons of PDF books, uh, journal articles that you can research. Um, so powerful. Theology on the Web, really that's my go-to uh, for online resource at this point, just because they have so many I would say if you could just go, if you wanted to spend your time on one website, Theology on the Web and the related websites. So really, if you were to do research for your exegetical paper, if you were to do um, uh, study, Theology on the Web has everything, okay? So um, I'm actually going to really recommend that you focus on Theology on the Web. Um, online Bible software, online Bible software. Uh, Pastor Sonny mentioned ARC Bible, and we can add that later. I do, I am going to limit you. I am going to limit you to Step Bible in the line. I want you to master Step Bible. We will slowly be using it. You will see the power of Step Bible to look at the original languages, to do word searches, to do, to do various different things. Um, we will really be using Step Bible, uh, not only in this class, but really in EVST and in my classes uh, that I'll teach at CGST because it's a free Bible software. It's incredibly powerful. It's put up by Tyndale House in England. If anyone knows Tyndale House, Tyndale House is top, scholar, top scholarly work. The top scholars go to Tyndale House. So Step Bible is so powerful. Um, I know I'm just speaking you know, you, you're like, I want to see, I want to see Tim these promises. So we will, we will do that. Okay. So really, uh, your assignments, one of your assignments for next week will be to really explore theology on the web and step Bible. And I'll have a specific assignment for you. Um, the, the next section is online Christian resources and media, desiring God, monergism and the gospel coalition. What I, want, what I want to say is that Desiring God, Monergism, and Gospel Coalition, of course, you might find something that you would disagree theologically. Uh, most of these websites have multiple perspectives, but they offer a lot of good content. They offer good articles. Desiring God answers a lot of different questions. They have a, a podcast where it's asked Pastor John Piper. Again, we don't agree with everything that Pastor John says. There are things that I disagree with him. But as far as looking at good content, especially answering deep theological questions, applicational questions, these are some excellent resources that you could use, articles you could use in your homework, or that you can also use in your ministry. And there are also books on there as well. So um, uh, again, those, those are excellent resources. And then lastly, we have online theological journal articles. So if we're looking at the direction of research in the U.S., the direction of research in other fields, in, in uh, the scientific fields, in, um, in biology, in, um, in chemistry, in uh, the medical field, most of the, most of the scholarly works are now done on, in journals. There's a specific... Uh, uh, investigation. There's a specific uh, thesis they're trying to answer. And a, a journal has an article where it's a, an extended research paper, and it really answers a specific question or unpacks a specific passage of scripture. And they're incredibly helpful. Uh, they're not as big as a book. Maybe they're 20 pages, maybe they're 15 pages, but, but they're really targeting a specific question, a specific issue. They're very, they're excellent. I use a lot of journal articles. 
And so um, uh, I want us to start using more journal articles. And so here I just have four, four good uh, journal articles that um, you can access. There's actually a lot more on theology on the web. So it's already 842. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through some examples here so that you can see, and I'll give you the assignment. Okay. Um, uh, theology on the web. So let's go to theology on the web. So I click, I click here. So now we're, we're on to theology on the web here. So I'm going to click on the, I'm going to click on the, the link. So now it's coming up to theology on the web. So this is, this says here, making biblical scholarship accessible. So this is, uh, the purpose is to make high quality theological material available freely throughout the world. And so this is, this is a resource for Bible teachers, for pastors. It's digitizing, uploading, um, providing bibliographies, and also cross-references, okay? So, so this is the main website. And if you look to the left, here you have already a bunch of different, uh, if you look down here, Dubai, you see this, journals. So what we have here is, uh, again, going into the, I was referring to the importance of, of re researching with journal articles. Here we have Anglican, we have Baptist, we have Brethren, we have Congregational, we have Pentecostal, we have Wesleyan. So, so we don't agree with all these. Let me just be clear. We don't agree with all these, but there are some good theologians from each one of these areas. And so even in our research, we just don't want to research the Baptist position although we might agree with the Baptist position. Perhaps we want to also consider what an Anglican would say, what a Pentecostal would say. And, but, but the benefit, Monica, is that this is the best. This is the best of Pentecostal. This is the best of Congregational. This is the best of Brethren. Uh, it's not going to be a situation where you're getting the most extreme. You're getting scholarly, scholarly uh, well-thought-out positions, okay? And so we'll come back uh, to these more later, but... Um, uh, I want to share this with you so that you can do your own research. You can look around on your own, okay? Um, coming over here to the right, we have, we have several different areas. I see that I think it's seven different areas, okay? And so you're dealing with biblical archaeology, biblical studies, early church history, medieval church history, Reformation church, theological studies, and missiology. So this is like the whole shebang uh, for research, okay? So I'll just... The one, because we're doing hermeneutics, we're going to really sit upon two of these, biblical studies and theological studies, because in the hermeneutical process, we're looking at what the text says, significance in the text, we're looking at theology and then application. So, so for this class, we're really focusing on biblical studies and theological studies. So I'm going to click on biblical studies here. And so now it brings up uh, a different... Uh, uh, website link. So I'm going to click down here. I'm going to go now to the specific biblical studies webpage. So everyone saw that. So you have to click on biblical studies and then, and then you click again. So you're actually looking at the website, biblicalstudies.org.uk. Okay. Now, if you notice here, this, uh, there's a, 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 I would recommend everyone to watch. There's multiple videos. He's giving a COVID update, but there's a lot of different videos from Theology on the Web, so I would encourage you to visit their website because he's going to explain. This is the, the founder. I, I forget his name, um, but he's the founder of Theology on the Web, and so I would definitely recommend, I would definitely recommend that you watch some of these videos here, but, but let's just look here. I'm going to go to, just to show you the power, just to show you the power, so if you look over to the right, you have... Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. So I'm just going to go to New Testament, click on New Testament. And then what we have here is I'm going to go, let me just again go to a specific. So I'm going to go to letters and then I want to go to Romans. Okay, so I'm going to go to Romans. Okay, so now what we have here is we have a, a massive list, uh, an archive of different resources. And there's, and, and, and each one of these, uh, these images here signify something different, okay? Um, so just looking down through here, these are, uh, these are PDFs. So let's, um, let me just pick one here. 
Let me look down here. I'll look for a book. Uh, some of these books you have to buy. So it's just giving you a bibliography before you can buy them, Amazon CBD, and then others you can download. So for, okay, for, for example here, uh, uh, let's go down to, okay, I'm not, uh, you know, we don't support everything, but if you look down here, there is this, um, uh, uh, this book, John Calvin, translated by John Owen, Commentaries on the Epistle of Paul to the Romans. So this would be John Calvin's commentary on the Book of Romans. We don't agree with everything, but uh, he would have some good things to say. So I click here and just let it load. Now you have this book, John Calvin's commentary on Romans, and you literally can just download it and you have the full book for your, for your, for your purposes, okay? So very powerful. Let's, let's just go, let's just take a step back. Um, let me pick a, a journal article. Let me find a good German ar journal article here. So if you notice here, there's multiple PDFs. You have John Elcott Charles. You have um, a lot of different um, PDFs here. Let, let me look at a specific, I want to look at a journal article. Okay, so this is good. So I'm just looking here. I'm clicking on... Uh, the meaning of righteousness in the epistle of the Romans. Okay, so this, this is a rather old article, but what this, this, this article is answering the question, what is the meaning of righteousness of God in the epistle of Romans? So you can see it's a very specific uh, thesis. It's a very specific purpose, okay? And then he's going to answer that one question. So if I was... If I was, um, I'm going to be unpacking for us Romans 1, 16 and 17. And in Romans 1, 16 and 17, it says, uh, um, it refers to the righteousness of God. So this journal article would directly address my question concerning what is the definition of, how do we further de de define righteousness of God? Well, he's answering that question and he's giving us the full meaning in the book of Romans. It's, it's a perfect research tool to really understand what this means, okay? So again, you can read it, or it, actually it's ready, already downloaded. You can just save it as a PDF. And this is dealing with the Greek and the English. It's very, this one you probably need to know some Greek because it's always quoting um, the Greek. But this is just an example. There's tons of resources on this. Um, let me just go to, um, let me, uh, let me go back and I'll just pick out one journal article so you can see, you can see the journal article, um, what I'm referring to here. So let's just go to Baptist journals. I'm just going to go to Baptist journals and, um, uh, you can see all the different Baptist journals. Okay. Uh, this is actually, this is actually the school that I went to. <laughs> this is for my, this is for my, uh, master of divinity. Um, and so they have all this, the, the journals, um, I would, I would caution because some of this, this is a more fundamental Baptist, but there's a lot of good articles here. Um, uh, and you can just look at the different topics. Let me go back to a more ap applicable one. So we could go uh, Southern Baptist Journal. So this is a, no, one of the number one conservative, um, Southern Baptist is one of the number one journal journals in the U S. Uh, and so I can just click on some of these. I, I seeing here if this is yeah okay so i just i just picked on one and it links to it actually links to the um uh to the actual southern baptist website and so the question i picked up i just randomly picked it Technolo technological futures and god's sovereignty how far will we be allowed to go and so that's answering dealing with the question on god's sovereignty maybe you agree maybe you disagree but it's free, just download, <laughs> boom, there you have it. So this guy is interacting with God's, God's sovereignty. I can come back here, um, let me pick. Uh, so this would be a very practical, so moment competent, some of this is very technical, some of it's very practical, look at this. Despair amid suffering and pain, a practical outworking of open theism's diminished view of God. And so this article is going to deal with um, uh, a very practical uh, 
situation where how do we deal with suffering and pain in an open theistic diminished view of God? Now, you, you might say, what is open theism? Well, that's something where you can read the article to understand what it is and also um, why it is important for us to have particular views on God. So we would, not, we would hold to a classic view that God knows all and that he knows the future and that he, he is not controlling everything like a puppet, but that he is in complete control in the sense that he is, um, he is uh, working all things according to the counsel of his will, okay? And so, but this is very practical journal article for pastoral ministry because it's dealing with theology in the application of suffering and pain. Um, so that's another example, okay? So is everyone tracking with me? Does everyone see and understand uh, I'll just open it up for questions. Is everyone tracking with me uh, uh, in this process? Do, do, does anyone have a question or a comment? Um, is that making sense what we're doing here? I, I, and I think it's very basic and straightforward. Yeah, I got a thumbs up. Good, great. Okay, so we're, it's already almost nine o'clock and we've done, we, it's already becoming late. So I don't want to start the, 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 we are behind by one hour, but that's fine because of the introductions. What I'll do is let's go to the homework. If no one has any questions, let's go to the homework and then we'll just pick up next week, uh, next week on for the, uh, for the method. I want, I want to give you the method and, um, uh, and so we'll just pick up next week. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead to the PowerPoint and I'm just going to, so for, for the CT and the, and the MA, number one, your number one homework assignment, confirm your program. <laughs> so I've given you a lot of information. I recommend that you pray. You pray some more. You talk to your pastor. You talk to your church leaders. You want to talk to me. We can set up a time to discuss. If you want to talk to Henry, perhaps it's better to talk to Henry. Henry's really overseeing the relationship um, with CGST. You can talk to Henry, um, but confirm Confirm your program. Um, number two, assignment number one, familiarize yourself with the cloud research tool. So I want you to be practicing yourself. Next week, I'm going to ask you, uh, or I'll have you submit uh, just a short document. Yes, I practiced with the cloud research tool. So you, number one, what I'm, what I'm expecting you to do is this. Look up stepbible.org through the cloud resource tool, okay? Go through the process, go on to Step Bible and look around. Try to, try to, um, try to use it, okay? We'll practice with it next week. Uh, secondly, there are videos on YouTube. It's not required, but I recommend watching one or two introductory videos on YouTube. Perhaps that will be an assignment for next week. So uh, look up stepbible.com. And then number two, you try it yourself. Go to Theology on the Web and download a journal article that you would like to read. You don't, it's not, you don't have to read it. Um, just look around. I want you to try to do it on your own. Okay, so very basic. That's all you have to do. And then number, number uh, the, the, the last point is to choose your passage of scripture for your uh, sermon project. So that's one two that's three it's three it's three th it's three things okay three things um specifically okay and, and you can do more all right the review of the the concise method we'll just do that next week okay so you have uh try the cloud research tool and specifically i want you to, to start practicing with step bible and also theology on the web download one journal article that you think that it would be a benefit to your ministry maybe it's a question you had so it, it's going to be some time clicking around, looking at the different things. Maybe you want to look at the Anglican perspective on something. Perhaps, I don't know. You know, uh, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. We're in the clouds. We're in the clouds. Uh, lastly, MA, additional MA. There's an additional assignment. Read chapter two, the history of interpretation by Klein, Blomberg, and Hubbard. So I will send out that PDF either later tonight or early tomorrow morning. And you need to read chapter two. And so what is recluded with that is also the reflection report number one. So your, your assignment in addition to the CT is to read chapter two and then complete your first reflection report. I will 
post a uh, template example tomorrow as well. And um, that's, that's it. That's all she wrote. So it's 8.58. Any questions or comments? We have two minutes and then we'll be topo snob because this is already, pa uh, Pastor Edward, go ahead. Are you going to post this, this assignment on the Facebook page? Yes, I will, I will, I will repost this assignment and I'll also post a template as well of, of what I'm looking for because I do want you to I do want a document that says assignment number one I I yeah so yeah I will post a, a specific yeah good good question uh, sir sir Steve, uh, sir sir Steve sir Tim uh, are you using the third edition of the biblical hermeneutic by Kleins and Bloomberg and Hubbard uh, it's the one that I think it's the third edition because it's the one that I'm I'm coordinating with Kuya Boyet, uh, Dr. Boyet. So I think it's the third edition. I have to confirm that, but I think it's the third edition. Yeah, because I have one in Kindle, so yeah, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it should be that. It should, it, it, I think it's the most it's the most recent yet, Tom. All right, thank you so much. Good. Anyone else? Any other any other questions? Okay, I think it's self-explanatory. Again, I just want to welcome everybody and. Thank you for, for embarking on this journey with us. And um, to close this in prayer, I want Pastor Edwin, if you could go ahead and close this in prayer. I saw that hand. I, I, I will always be a fundamental Baptist. I saw that hand in the invitation. So go ahead and close this out in prayer. Come okay, on. let's pray. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for giving us the chance to know more about your word and to interpret as well as to teach this, to share this in a, in a manner that is in accordance to your, to your word, that, uh, which is in what you have intended us to learn. So I thank you for our teacher, Tim. And I pray that we will all be challenged about this performance, readings, what we will be doing. Help us, God, that we will be motivated to do our tasks, our assignments, our paper that we need to submit and all the assignments and readings that we need to do. Bless every one of us, Lord. And just we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And bye, bye God bless you Amen. and have Amen. a great night. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, good night.